subscribe. I only do this for you and turn on your notifications. Let's do it. tells you, listen, only God is the judge. That is not true. And it's not scriptural. This is the reason why there are so many people going through situations and they are praying for things that God gave them the ability to deal with. Let me explain to you something. God's desire and God's design is to intervene in situations that you have no ability to take care of. So we pray for divine intervention. But there is a grace that God has given every believer to have the ability to stand as a judge. A believer or a Christian is not somebody that uh, simply represents Jesus in speech, but you represent him in deed and in power. I want you to hear that again. You, you, you introduce, you make people to see the Lord Jesus, not just the loving Jesus, but the Jesus that can win battles, the Jesus that can heal, the Jesus that can deliver. I wish I was talking to somebody. The Jesus that can change situations. That is the kind of Jesus that you need to display. And in order for you to do that, you need to carry the judge's anointing, the ability to walk like a judge. If you, walk, if you look in the Bible, uh, if you look in the Old Testament, there is a whole book dedicated to judges. When Joshua died, the children of Israel asked the Lord, who will go for us, who will fight for us, who will defend us? Because the one who was judging, the one who was protecting them, was no longer there. Joshua had gone home to be with the Lord. So they asked God and God started raising judges. Now the interesting thing is you'll find that there were female judges and there were male judges. Samson was a judge. There were so many judges that God raised. Listen to me. You are among the judges that God has raised for this time. I thought I would hear a better amen. You are among the judges that God has raised for this time. You see, in order for the, for the heavens, in order for the angels to hearken to your voice, in order for demons to comply to what you're saying, it will never work if you're just a, a, a Christian. There is more to being a believer than just to say Jesus is Lord. It's the ability to execute it's the ability to be an extension of God's very own hand. This is where God wants to take you. Hallelujah. So you are controlling the sea and everything that is in the sea. Uh -huh. Meaning you control the heavens and everything that moves in the heavens. Over the cattle. If you're going to control cattle, it means you control the land. Uh huh. And over all the earth. Not just where there is cattle, but everywhere. Even in the bush. Even in the jungle. Uh -huh. And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Listen to this. You have been given power. From the day man was created, God's intention was this guy, this woman I'm making, will control the water, will control the land, who control the air, who control even everything that is moving upon the earth. Anything that enters the earth, the earth's atmosphere, both visible and invisible, you are in control. Ah, this amends, I don't think people understand it, where we are going with this. You see, rebuking demons was not a plan B. It was always plan A. Pulling down strongholds. Pulling down the prince of the power of the air. This was always the plan. Because they're in your jurisdiction. Somebody's not listening to me. You have already been given control of these areas. So if a demon is hiding... Yes. He saith unto them, uh -huh. let us pass over Now, notice this. Stop right there. I want you to understand what is happening. The Lord Jesus is looking at his disciples in the evening, telling them, listen, let us go to the other side. 
Now, I want you to understand, every time that you want to go to the other side, a storm will rise to test if you carry the ability and the grace to go to the other side. I'm going to say that again. Whenever God wants to lift you, whenever God wants to open doors for you, a storm will rise to test you if you're ready for the other side. Whenever the children of Israel were ready to cover new ground, there were new giants to fight. I wish somebody could hear me. Whenever God wanted to empower the Lord Jesus to begin his ministry, after the Lord declared, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, immediately he was, uh, he was led into the wilderness to be tested and to be tempted of the devil. I wish somebody could hear me. Whenever you are ready to be lifted up, wherever God, whenever God is about to take you, to another dimension, there will always be a storm to rise to see if you are fit to go to the other side. The other side is not for little children. Uh, I wish somebody could hear me. The other side, the other side is not for people who, who are going to cry. It's not for people who are going to complain. The other side is not for people who are weak. The other side is not where uh, 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 people who murmur, the people who blame God, the people who blame people, the people who blame those who are around, they will never go to the other side. Because to go to the other side, you prove, you prove number one, maturity. Not only physical, but spiritual maturity. You prove your ability to endure. You have to prove that you are actually anointed to go to the other side. Remember, when God anoints you, the devil doesn't know. I'm, I'm going to say that again. When God anoints somebody, the devil doesn't know. So when you stand before the devil, the devil will test to see if you really have the oil. I'll say that again. When God anoints you, the devil is not afraid of the anointing. He's also anointed. The Bible says, you anointed cheer up. So he's also anointed. So he knows how to test the anointing. If you carry something more than he possesses, then you can pass. So Satan is not afraid of your anointing. He's afraid if you know that you carry it. He's afraid if you know the position that you have been placed in the spirit. He's afraid if you know that the other side actually belongs to you. That is, is, is simply occupying ground that does not even belong to him. It is strange for Jesus asking them, you don't have faith. Why are you so fearful? Now you have to understand, if God is asking you, why are you fearful? It means that he has already told you something that should remove fear. So this statement shocked them. Why would Jesus ask us, why are you so fearful? I, I, I wish somebody could hear me. Jesus is asking them, why are you so fearful? Why? Why are you fearful? Why is it that you have no faith? Now you have to understand, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Meaning that faith does not manifest unless God has spoken. So for Jesus to ask them, why are you fearful? Number one, it means that, they missed what God had said to them. Why is it that you have no faith? It means that what God spoke never entered them. So not only did they miss the voice, but the voice never manifested what he needed to manifest in them. But the question is, when did God say this to them? Because Jesus is rebuking the storm, is rebuking the wind, is rebuking the, the sea, and everything is calm. Notice Jesus did not pray. Uh, you're not listening to me. Jesus didn't pray. He just told the wind, what do you think you're doing? Calm down. And the wind said, yes, sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for misbehaving. So when did God ever say this to them for them not to be afraid? Remember, their ancestors already dealt with the sea. The sea obeyed Moses. The river obeyed obeyed. Uh, uh, Obeyed, the, 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 obeyed Elijah, obeyed the priests, obeyed Elisha. So many people have gone across the waters. Why were they confident to do this? What did they get that the apostles did not get? Genesis chapter chapter 1. Go to Genesis chapter 1. 
Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to show you where your strength lies as a child of God. You're going to learn where your strength lies as a child of God. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Notice this. The first authority of man was not land. Was the sea. Because remember, water covers 70% of the earth. So God cannot give you control from the smallest part. He gives you control from the biggest part to the smallest part. So if you cannot deal with the sea, you cannot deal with the land. Because remember, what gave the land was the sea. So somebody that can control the sea can produce the land. I wish somebody could hear me. I wish somebody could hear me. So the first jurisdiction you see God giving them is not just the land. You see, you like where you're comfortable, yet you are not called to comfortable places. In order for man to be exactly like God, he needed to start like God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So God's first dominion for man has to be to reflect him. If you are created in his image and likeness, the first part you see God is on top of water. Uh, somebody is not listening to me. So the first place you see God manifesting in the physical world, in the natural world, in the tangible world, is upon water. Uh, uh, somebody, somebody is not listening to me. The first part you see God ever manifesting, showing up, is on what should be impossible for material things to do. You see, what people don't understand is this. Your miracle is not in the green places. Your miracle is not where things work out. Your miracle is in the midst of the trouble you are in. You see, God comes and the first thing he sees is there is chaos. Water is covering everything. God is able to produce land out of what he tells the land, he tells the water, produce the land. The water gives up the land. Meaning the promised land was always underwater. And somebody is not listening to me. The promised land wasn't anyway, it was underwater. The garden was underwater. Everything that you ever wanted was under the water. When a baby is about to be born, the baby comes out of water. Water has to break for the child to... I'm talking to the wrong people. Somebody is not listening to me. You have to understand that water represents life. But somebody who is natural sees water and sees it as death. I'm going to drown. I'm going to be destroyed. This and this is going to happen. Listen, we were born in the fire. Our God is a consuming fire. There is nothing that this world can ever produce. There is nothing that this world can ever give. There is nothing this natural world can ever produce that will consume us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they walked in the fire as if they were walking in their kitchen. The king thought he would barbecue them. But nothing happened to them. So the first part you see God manifesting himself is upon water. Because it's out of water that everything comes. And rivers of living water shall come out of your bellies. And I saw the sea, the crystal sea, coming from the throne of God. So the first dominion of man The first dominion of man is the sea. Let me show you something that will shock you. Remain just there. Remember where we are. But I want you to read verse 20. Mm -hmm. 
So where did the egos come from? Everything that flies came from what? Ah, uh, yeah, I don't think you understand it. I don't think if you're catching. Is it? I don't think if you. I don't know if you're catching this. The prophetic is born in what? Those who are born from the earth remain earthbound. Remember, the heavens gives water. So whoever is born of water is born of the heavens. Uh, Somebody is not listening to what I'm saying. That's why you find the Bible saying that these two bear witness. Water, blood, and the earth. Uh -uh. It's talking about Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. So go back to where we were. Read it one more time. Kabaya uh-huh. God said, uh-huh. let us make man in our image. Mm-hmm. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Subscribe. I only do this for you. And turn on your notifications. Let's go.